Hey, this is our uh, introduction to signals here, and this is a little short lecture about um, just sort of uh, different kinds of signals, signal classifications. All right, so what is a signal? Uh, we've been dealing mostly with uh, static signals up to this point. Uh, and so when we talk about a signal, what we're really talking about is kind of a dynamic signal, something that changes over time. Uh, but a signal at its root is any physical change um, that conveys information about a measured variable. So if the mercury in my thermometer uh, moves, uh, that's a signal, right? If the voltage on my thermocouple changes, uh, that change in voltage is a signal too. Uh, and so we can have different kinds of uh, the ways that that signal gets transmitted, either through a physical displacement uh, or more often, really, especially when we start talking about dynamic signals uh, in terms of a change in voltage. And the reason I say more often is because when we talk about dynamic signals, we usually want to record that. We want some record of what happened. Um, and to do that, we need a we need a computer or I mean, you could uh, like you think about an old earthquake monitor, it could be on a piece of paper, uh, but almost always for us, it's going to be uh, on a computer. Okay. And so the first division that we can talk about is di a division between a static signal and a dynamic signal. Um, and much of what we're going to talk about when we talk in the next couple videos is about dynamic signals. Um, so a dynamic signal in nature uh, tends to be continuous, uh, and we call that uh, an analog signal. So if we look at this plot over here, you can see over time, there's a value for this signal, whatever this is. It could be a voltage or a, you know, change in uh, location or something. Uh, there is at any you know, infinitesimal point here, I could find a value here uh, that gives me a very accurate uh, picture of what happens at that infinitesimal moment. So that's a continuous signal. Most things in nature, uh, uh, in the physical world, uh, act in terms of continuous signals, right? So if we speed up, uh, we don't jump from going 29 miles per hour to 30 miles per hour. Uh, we go 29 and then 29.0001, right? 0002, um, and we continue, and you go up along a, a a continuous range. Um, but the problem with that in uh, the scientific world is that we oftentimes want to analyze that or process that signal on a computer uh, and computers don't deal with continuous signals. They uh, deal with um, bits and bytes and like you you're either have a zero one or you have a one zero or a zero zero. Um, and so you have to define that continuous signal, uh, that analog signal, in a discretized or a digitized form. Uh, and that means you're going to have just a value at this time point um, and at this time point. But more than that, it means that the values are discrete, right? I can have something that's this value and this value, uh, but I can't have one in between, okay? And that's what a discrete signal means. Uh, and we can have a time discrete signal or an amplitude discrete signal. And in this case, we have one that's both of those. And in, on a computer, you're going to need to have one that is discrete in both directions. Now, this raises a problem, right? Because the physical world is analog and our computer world is uh, discrete, uh, is digitized. And so oftentimes we have to do some kind of analog to digital conversion in which we change an analog signal uh, into a discrete signal. Um, and there are different ways to do that, and we'll talk uh, some about that process. Um, but that's an important part of the data collection process is deciding how we're going to digitize or how we're going to discretize uh, our continuous signals. The next division we can talk about in terms of a signal is simple versus complex. A simple um, signal, uh, we usually think of that as in terms of a sinusoidal signal, right? Something that's uh, following a sine or cosine type shape um, that changes in a very uh, predictable and has one nice clear frequency, right? So this is our uh, a simple wave uh, that serves as our signal. 
Uh, a complex signal, which is something that we'll run into more often, uh, in, again, in the physical world, is literally the sum of simple signals. Okay, so this wave here, you can see it kind of has the shape of the one above it. But what I've done is added a couple of uh, higher frequency waves to this, uh, and it gives it this the sort of jagged look. Um, but really, that's just a couple of simple signals that are added together. But oftentimes, when we have a complex signal like that, we want to break it down and figure out what those what simple signals are going into that. Because we might be interested in a couple of different things, right? We might be interested in this high frequency wave, this sort of jaggedness here. But we might also be interested in the, the larger low frequency wave. Um, and so we sometimes want to break those down. And we'll talk about that, how we do that in processing uh, as well. Uh, and just to give another uh, kind of physical example of this, if we pluck a string like this, what happens is that string is going to vibrate in a couple of different uh, harmonic frequencies, uh, and in this case with two closed ends in the first, third, and fifth uh, harmonics. Uh, and when we add those together, uh, we actually get a complex wave. Um, and so if you did this with a string and you took a really accurate picture of that string, you could see these different harmonics here. Um, they're just different waves that are being added to each other. Uh, and that happens a lot uh, with data processing. Uh, we'll have um, multiple signals uh, acting on the, on the same dynamic signal. And then our last uh, little division is between uh, deterministic signals and uh, stochastic signals. So we, in, we can kind of go another step into complexity as we move from deterministic into stochastic. A deterministic signal is one that has some recognizable mathematical uh, base to it, right? We can um, see that this is a couple of sinusoidal curves added to each other. We can see that it repeats, and oftentimes a deterministic signal will have a pattern, right, where something repeats, uh, where uh, something repeats itself or maybe decays or increases in a recognizable way. Um, a stochastic signal is one that's going to look um, more random, okay? And it's not exactly random because there might be some pattern here. You might think of this like if this was um, a velocity reading of a wind vane or uh, a turbulent flow uh, beneath a dam. Most of these readings are between 10 and 20, right? So there's some pattern here. Um, but in terms of the next data point, it would be very hard to pick the next data point. In fact, it would be uh, nearly impossible to pick that next data point. And that's a stochastic. So we don't see a pat. There's no repeated pattern here. Like this jaggedness here does not. Oh, it actually looks like <laughs> it repeats over here, but it doesn't. You can see that that's different there. Uh, and um, so there's, there's no pattern that we can see over and over in, that, in a stochastic signal. And we'll analyze those in different ways, right? Um, if we wanted to understand this or understand that, we'd have to use different tools. All right, and just to close a real quick review, I've been using the terms frequency and amplitude, and I think I said period at one point, um, but just to remind you about your uh, wave definitions, and that's where these are coming from. Signals effectively act as waves, or they look like waves, uh, and so we talk about them with the same language. Amplitude, sometimes amplitude can be peak to peak amplitude. Uh, more often, amplitude is defined as center to peak. Uh, and finding that center, we'll talk about how to do that in signal processing as well. Um, a period is one full cycle of a, of a deterministic signal. And it has to be deterministic, right? Because a stochastic signal is not going to have a period. It doesn't have a re repeating pattern. Um, but the period uh, is from peak to peak of um, of our uh, deterministic signal. And finally, we talk about the frequency, which is how many cycles per second, uh, and that's hertz. Um, and again, only a deterministic signal is going to have frequency because a uh, stochastic <coughs> signal doesn't have any cycle. It doesn't have a repetition that we can count. Okay, So there's a little quick uh, intro to um, some of the language we use when we talk about uh, dynamic signals.